what you saw was a change in the way drug cartels fought with violence. In Mexico's drug war, all eyes have been on the big cartels like Sinaloa and Jalisco New Generation. But while they've been battling it out for absolute dominance, something darker has been brewing in the shadows. Recent footage shows a terrifying scene, bodies left in the streets after a brutal shootout in broad daylight. And it's not just a random act of violence either. It's a message meant to instill fear. More videos have surfaced, showing heavily armed men in military-style uniforms. These aren't soldiers, but cartel members mimicking their looks and tactics. These scenes bring back memories of a name that once struck terror across Mexico, Los Zetas. Once the most feared cartel, many thought they were gone. But now, signs point to their return. The methods and the sheer brutality, it all looks like Los Zetas' old playbook. So if they're really coming back, Mexico could face a storm of violence worse than anything seen in years. The drug war has been brutal, but with Los Zetas in the mix again, it could reach new levels of horror. Mexico's criminal world might be about to change in ways no one ever saw coming. To understand the potential rebirth of Los Zetas, we need to go back to their origins, to a time when Mexico's drug war was about to take a turn towards unprecedented violence. The year was 1997. Mexico's war on drugs was heating up, and the Gulf Cartel, one of the country's most powerful criminal organizations at the time, was looking for an edge. Their leader, Ociel Cardenas Guillén, had an idea that would change the face of organized crime in Mexico forever. He reached out to a group of elite soldiers from the Mexican Army's Grupo Aeromovil de Fuerzas Especiales, or GAFE for short. These weren't just any soldiers, they were the cream of the crop. Trained by the U.S. Army's 7th Special Forces Group in advanced military tactics, weapons, as well as intelligence gathering, OCL then made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Leave the Army and come work for him for a lot more money than they were making as soldiers. 31 of these elite soldiers ended up taking the deal and deserting their posts to become the military arm of the Gulf Cartel. Their leader was a man named Arturo Guzman de Chena, known by his radio call sign, Z1. Now, people didn't know it at the time, but this was the birth of the Los Zetas. At first, Los Zetas operated simply as enforcers for the Gulf Cartel. They were bodyguards, hit men, and intelligence gatherers. But these weren't your typical cartel thugs. These were highly trained military operatives, and they brought a level of professionalism and brutality to the drug trade that Mexico had never seen before. What you saw was a change in the way drug cartels fought with violence. It was no longer those gang members with shaved heads and tattoos, fighting with pistols and knives. It was militarized style, fighting like military units. Los Zetas introduced military-grade weapons to cartel warfare. They used encrypted communications, employed sophisticated surveillance techniques, and even built improvised armored vehicles known as narco-tanks. But more than their equipment, it was their tactics that set Los Zetas apart. They didn't just kill their enemies, they made examples of them. Los Zetas became known for brutal public executions, often leaving mangled bodies in public places with warning messages attached. They filmed sessions and executions, distributing the videos to spread terror. This wasn't just violence. It was, for all intents and purposes, psychological warfare in its purest form. As Los Zetas grew in power and influence, tensions began to rise with their Gulf Cartel bosses, mainly due to the many disagreements between the factions. You had this small unit which grew and grew, that is the set that was inside the Gulf Cartel, until eventually it was like a whole army within the Gulf Cartel that would rise up saying, we don't need you anymore, we're gonna take this for ourselves. While the founding fathers of the cartel were struggling to maintain their authority, the Los Zetas division was constantly fighting for more control, thinking that they were better equipped to handle the cartel's inner workings because of their military background. The final breaking point came in 2010, when Los Zetas, now under the leadership of Heriberto Lascano Lascano, known as the Executioner, decided it was time to strike out on their own. 
And needless to say, the split was as violent as it could get, and an all-out war between Los Zetas and the Gulf Cartel ensued, a war that would leave thousands dead in its wake. But Los Zetas emerged victorious, and in doing so, they changed the paradigm of how cartels operated in Mexico forever. Unlike traditional cartels that relied on complex networks of corruption and bribery to maintain their power, Los Zetas employed a much more direct approach. They would move into a new territory with overwhelming force, using extreme violence to subjugate the local population and eliminate any opposition. One of the most notorious examples of this tactic occurred in 2011 in the town of Allende, Coahuila. Los Zetas, suspecting that members of a local family had stolen money from them, didn't just go after the individuals they believed responsible. Instead, they essentially declared war on the entire town. What followed next is hard to imagine. Over the course of several days, Los Zetas gunmen rounded up and killed an estimated 300 people, but the real number might be much higher. They used heavy machinery to demolish dozens of buildings, including homes and businesses. The message was clear. Cross Los Zetas, and your entire community would pay the price. This level of brutality wasn't just for show. It was a calculated strategy to instill such fear in the population that resistance became unthinkable. Los Zetas became so brutal that this became a goal in itself. Before long, the army generals would offer honor medals to the most brutal soldiers. But the Los Zetas weren't content with just controlling drug routes. They diversified their criminal portfolio in ways that never occurred to other cartels before them. They got into human trafficking, kidnapping, extortion, and even seemingly mundane crimes like DVD piracy and oil theft. Their military training allowed them to approach these crimes with a level of organization and efficiency that was unprecedented in the criminal underworld. They treated crime like a business, always looking for new opportunities to expand their empire. And by 2011, at the height of their power, Los Zetas had a presence in more than half of Mexico's states. They had also expanded into Guatemala, and there were reports of Zetas operations as far south as Colombia and as far north as Chicago. They had become more than just a drug cartel. They were now a transnational criminal army. But as the saying goes, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, and Los Zetas' fall would be spectacular. The beginning of the end came in October 2012, when Mexican Marines managed to eliminate Heriberto Lascano in a shootout in Coahuila. And, in a bizarre twist that fed conspiracy theories for years, Lascano's body was stolen from the funeral home, where it was taken for identification, and his whereabouts remain unknown to this day. The leadership of Los Zetas passed to Miguel Angel Trevino Morales, better known as Forty. Trevino was known for his extreme brutality, even by Los Zetas standards. There were stories of him personally torturing and executing enemies, and even some pretty disturbing allegations that he would eat the hearts of his victims. They also prepared guisos. These are stews, where you take a member of the family, and you put them in a pig boiler, and you pour gasoline on them, and then you set a match to them. But Trevino's reign would be short-lived. In July 2013, he was captured by Mexican Marines in a town near the Texas border. Um, and they launched a, a joint operation involving a helicopter and ground troops. Uh, they were able to stop the pickup truck without a shot fired, and they found uh, Trevino Morales, $2 million in cash, eight heavy weapons, and two other men. His brother, Omar Trevino Morales, alias Z42, quickly took over in a desperate bid to maintain control, but he too was captured less than two years later. So, with its top leadership either gone or incarcerated, the Los Zetas were facing the same fate that many other cartels in this situation usually have to face. They began to slowly fragment. The organization split into numerous factions, each claiming the fearsome Zetas name, but operating independently. The once mighty criminal empire had been reduced to a collection of smaller, local gangs, or so it seemed. As Los Zetas fractured and their power waned, a curious thing began to happen in the Mexican criminal landscape that shocked even the most seasoned law enforcement agents. Other cartels started adopting Zetas tactics, and the extreme violence that Los Zetas had introduced became the new normal in the cartel wars. 
former Zetas members, equipped with their extensive military training and experience in brutal cartel warfare, became highly sought after by other criminal organizations. It was as if Los Zetas hadn't really died, but had instead spread like a virus throughout Mexico's criminal ecosystem. Mass graves, dead bodies, hung from bridges, decapitated heads left out on the street have all become increasingly normalized. One of the most prominent examples of this is the cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, the CJNG. This relatively new cartel has risen to become one of the most powerful in Mexico, and they've done so by following the Los Zetas playbook as if it were their personal Bible. Much like the Los Zetas, the CJNG uses military-style tactics and equipment. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel took the fight to the next level, shooting down a military helicopter with a rocket-propelled grenade. Their rapid expansion and willingness to directly confront Mexican security forces are straight out of the Zetas manual, except that their leader, Mencho, gained a lot more infamy out of it than Los Zetas ever did. Tonight, the DEA is offering $10 million for information leading to the arrest of the Mexican drug kingpin known as El Mencho. But it's not just the CJNG. Former Zetas can be found in the ranks of almost every major criminal organization in Mexico now. They've brought with them their military training, their organizational skills, and their willingness to use extreme violence. Here's a very small sample. Most of it is simply too grisly to show. There was the summary beheading of 200 migrants, the casino fire which killed at least 50. The preferred method of killing involves beheading with chainsaws. As Mexico's cartel landscape continues to evolve, and with the recent arrest of Sinaloa cartel leader Ismael El Mayo Zambada creating a power vacuum, some experts are warning that conditions might be right for a resurgence of Los Zetas-style violence on a scale not seen in years. What I'm hearing so far from the state of Sinaloa is a lot of concern and fear that this is going to result in, in violence there. Things tend to get violent, even more violent than they are normally, and, and violence is the norm in Mexico. So when you take off a ca top cartel leader, they start, you know, the other leaders start vying for power, rivals start to move in, and it gets extremely bloody. While the original Los Zetas organization may have fragmented, its influence on Mexico's criminal landscape cannot be overstated. The military-style operations they introduced have become standard practice for many cartels. It's as if Los Zetas wrote a how-to manual for extreme violence, and now everyone's following it. This footage shows cartel members sporting military attire and flaunting their weapons for the world to see. They're no longer operating in hiding. They want the world to see exactly what they're capable of when provoked. One of the most chilling examples of this is the increasing use of narco tanks, or monsters. These are heavily armored vehicles that Los Zetas pioneered. These makeshift war machines, often built on the chassis of ordinary trucks, are outfitted with steel plating thick enough to stop the bullets coming from high-powered rifles. And it's pretty rare that people ever see these so-called monsters in action. But whenever footage like this emerges, it becomes easy to see just why the cartels use them so often. They're virtually impenetrable. These tanks have become a symbol of the escalating arms race between cartels and law enforcement. But perhaps the most enduring legacy of Los Zetas is the way they changed the economics of the drug trade. Before Los Zetas, cartels primarily focused on drug trafficking. Los Zetas showed that a criminal organization could diversify its operations, treating illegal activities like a business portfolio. This business model has been adopted by many of the cartels operating today. It's no longer enough to control drug routes. Modern cartels are involved in a wide range of criminal activities, often blurring the line between organized crime and legitimate business. One of the most prominent cartels to do so is the Cartel del Noreste, led by Juan Gerardo Trevino Chavez, also known as El Huevo or the egg. This group has been expanding its influence across northeastern Mexico. Now, El Huevo is the nephew of Miguel Angel Trevino Morales, one of the many fallen Zetas leaders, and he's been described by the DEA as the most powerful leader of the highly fragmented Zetas. Under his new leadership, the Northeast Cartel has been aggressively expanding its territory and influence at an extremely alarming pace. Well, Mexican drug cartels are not shy about making their presence known along the southern border to the point where they are turning everyday border towns into all-out war zones. When the gunfire broke out, my wife's kids had to take cover. They had to hide behind that building. But the Northeast Cartel isn't the only group with Zetas DNA. Another faction, known as Old School Zetas, or Zetas Viesha Escuela, has also been making waves. This group claims to adhere to the original Zetas Code of Conduct, 
As much as a violent criminal organization can be said to have a code, these groups, along with several smaller factions, are all vying for control of the territories and criminal enterprises once dominated by Los Zetas, and they're doing it with the same brutal efficiency that made Los Zetas infamous. But to better understand the potential for a full Los Zetas resurgence, we need to look at the current state of Mexico's cartel landscape. The recent arrest of Ismael El Mayo Zambada, the leader of the Sinaloa cartel, has created a significant power vacuum in the criminal world. It's pretty well documented at this point that El Mayo's arrest came under some pretty mysterious circumstances, with allegations of kidnapping and betrayal swirling around the event. It appears the Mexican authorities had no role in any of this operation. They have, have said so publicly uh, and seem to be scrambling for information about what happened just, just like everyone else. Some sources seem to be suggesting that he was lured to a meeting under false pretenses and then ambushed. El Mayo says, I did not turn myself in and I did not come voluntarily to the United States, nor did I have an agreement with either government. To the contrary, I was kidnapped and brought to the U.S. forcefully and against my will. What's worse, every lead now points to one of the sons of El Chapo being the one who tricked El Mayo into boarding the private plane on that fateful day. The fact that they went through the effort of bringing him here to be prosecuted would suggest that Guzman has arranged for or is hoping for some sort of lenient treatment. This kind of internal betrayal and power struggle is reminiscent of the turmoil that led to the original fragmentation of Los Zetas. It's in this type of chaotic environment that new players can rise to prominence or old players can make a comeback. Uh, so it's not as if you know taking these guys out has ended the drug war overnight. In fact, I think the business is going to continue as usual. The Sinaloa cartel, which has long been considered the most powerful criminal organization in all of Mexico, is now facing an uncertain future. This instability could provide an opportunity for Zeta's affiliated groups to expand their influence and control. Meanwhile, the rise of the CJNG has further complicated the picture. Their rapid expansion and willingness to engage in spectacular acts of violence have drawn comparisons to Los Zetas at their peak. Some experts worry that Mexico could be heading towards a level of cartel violence not seen since the heyday of Los Zetas. While it's easy to get caught up in the power struggles and dramatic events of the cartel world, it's crucial to remember the human cost of this violence. The legacy of Los Zetas isn't just about them, it's about the countless lives destroyed by their brutality. But it's not just headline-grabbing matters. The day-to-day -day reality of life in Zetas controlled territories was a nightmare of extortion, kidnapping, and constant fear. Entire communities were terrorized into submission. Local businesses were forced to pay protection money or face violent consequences. Anyone suspected of cooperating with authorities risked not just their own life, but the lives of their entire family. The war on drugs seems like an abstract notion, but when you stop and hear a mother crying out her newly departed son's name, it suddenly dawns on you that this is the real cost of this brutal trade. So as we look to the future, the question remains, are Los Zetas truly poised for a comeback? The answer is complex and uncertain. On one hand, the original Los Zetas organization, as it existed at its peak, is gone. The leadership has been decimated by arrests and internal conflicts. The group has splintered into numerous smaller factions, each operating more or less independently. But on the other hand, the ideology and methodology of Los Zetas are stronger than ever. The groups that emerge from the fragmentation of Los Zetas, like the Northeast Cartel and the Old School Zetas, continue to expand their influence even further. And they're using the same tactics and military-style operations that made Los Zetas so feared in the first place. Moreover, the adoption of Zetas' tactics by other major cartels means that, in a sense, Los Zetas are more influential now than ever before. Their approach to organized crime has become the standard operating procedure for much of Mexico's criminal underworld. And the current instability in the cartel landscape, particularly with the power vacuum left by El Mayo's arrest, could even provide an opportunity for Zetas' affiliated groups to reassert themselves. History has shown that periods of upheaval in the cartel world often lead to the emergence of new powers or the resurgence of old ones. 
But regardless of whether Los Zetas as an organization make a comeback, their impact on Mexico's drug war is undeniable and very much ongoing. The extreme violence they normalized, the military tactics they introduced to cartel warfare, and the diversified criminal operations they pioneered have fundamentally changed the nature of organized crime in Mexico. And as Mexico continues to be faced with endless cartel violence, the ghost of Los Zetas looms large still, whether through the actions of their direct descendants or through the adopted tactics of other cartels. The influence of Los Zetas continues to shape Mexico's criminal landscape. As new chapters unfold in Mexico's ongoing drug war, the lessons learned from the rise and fall of this infamous cartel will continue to resonate. The question now is not just whether Los Zetas will rise again, but how Mexico and the international community will respond to the ongoing legacy of brutality they left behind. In the end, the true measure of Los Zetas' impact may not be in the power of any one cartel, but in the way they forever change the rules of engagement in Mexico's criminal underworld. As we watch events unfold, one thing is clear. The shadow cast by Los Zetas over Mexico's drug war is long, and it shows no signs of fading anytime soon. The legacy of Los Zetas continues to shape Mexico's criminal landscape, leaving us to wonder, can the cycle of escalating cartel violence ever be broken? As this dark chapter in Mexico's history unfolds, your insights are valuable. Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of similar cartel-related issues. Until next time, stay safe.